Russia is growing and the Georgian president with the opposition threatening civil disobedience and another day of mass rallies. They vowed to stay on the streets, the protesters, until President Saakashvili quits. Let's get the latest and talk to Artis Nissa now, who's following the story for us uh, live today. Hi there, Nissa. Well, we're into the third day of protests now. As I mentioned there, some of these protesters are threatening civil disobedience. How seriously is their threat being taken? Well, they're still promising to try to keep things as peaceful as possible, promising no serious provocations, but really their public campaign of civil disorder or disobedience has already begun. It began Friday evening as they moved from the parliament building to certain points around the city, coming to the state television center to protest here, to, de to demand uh, that government-run television film these rallies so that people across the country can hear what they have to say about the president, why they're demanding his resignation. Uh, they're also trying to block as much traffic as possible and promising uh, that if he continues to not give in to their demands that they will expand even further and bring more people into the city, that they will block more and more roads and try to disrupt the city as much as possible. They've also made an announcement they're going to try to disrupt the president's schedule. They moved on Friday uh, some protesters to outside uh, the presidential residence throwing cabbages and carrots to kind of demonstrate a public discontent uh, for the job that the president is doing and they're still pledging that they will keep going and things will keep growing until Mikhail Saakashvili steps down. Now some of the president's former allies in Israel have turned against him and joined the ranks of the opposition. What reasons are they given for that about turn? Uh... That's right. Some of his former allies who worked very closely with him in his administration, one of them, Nina Borjanazi, who was the Speaker of the House, she also stepped in for him as president when early elections were held. Uh, she's a big opposition leader here. Also, Iraqi al Asanya, who was Georgia's former ambassador to the U UN, he's seen as a, as a favorite uh, if, if we do see early elections or a presidential campaign, if Mikhail Saakashvili does give in and resign. They've been speaking out, uh, speaking out on him. Uh, for several months or so, and they've organized these protests. And basically, each day at these protests, they read out a list of so-called crimes that, he, that they believe he has committed, from corruption to clamping down on freedom of press. Their basic uh, claim is that Georgia is not a democracy, that his promises uh, made during the Rose Revolution back in 2003 uh, have not come through. And so what they're demanding uh, is that he basically admit to this and step down. Now, a big turning point, it has to be pointed out, was uh, the conflict we saw over South Ossetia last August. Uh, that was a turning point for a lot of those opposition leaders like Alasanya and Bojanazi, who basically claimed that Georgia lost 20% of its territory, uh, that the military decision was irresponsible. And that's when things in this country really started to change. But in this, uh, back to the present, despite the uh, pressure that's being put upon him, at the moment, uh, President Saakashvili doesn't seem to be bowing to pressure. Is there any room for compromise there, do you think? Well, when these protests started, one of the reasons the opposition was claiming they needed to come out onto the streets was because they didn't want to have dialogue, that they didn't see that as an option. Uh, so far, after two, three days of protesting, we had an announcement from Iraqi al Asanya that they were ready to speak with the president, to have an open dialogue about the will of the people. So in a sense, that is progress. We did have an announcement from the president on Friday that he wasn't going anywhere, that he was going to finish his term until 2013. But there's only so many ways uh, that this could end. Either the protesters will get tired, either they'll come to some kind of compromise, or Mikhail Saakashvili will step down. We'll have to wait and see how it all turns out. Okay, Nissan, I was just seeing the uh, latest live pictures we were just there uh, over your shoulder of uh, the, the protesters gathering again, as we're saying there, for the third day. Very much across this story with you and the rest of the team, Sal. Nissan, now in Tbilisi. Thank you.